The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, guys. Hello. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get my screen going here. Um, anyway, so thanks everybody for for attending the, uh, the webinar today about about uh, Thinkware Data. Um, I'm just gonna hold off like maybe uh, one more minute or at about I don't know half of the attendee list is here. So um, if uh, um, we could let everybody get come in. And um, there is a, a there was a question about a call in number. Now I'll talk about um, questions there. The, I believe the call in number was on the invitation. Um, and I've got Robert Gefford also on the call. Robert, can, can you uh, look at the invitation and see if you can get these guys a, a call in number in the chat? Um, so that should be there. So, yep, I'll put it in the chat now. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Like I said, just just one more minute, and we'll and we'll get started. Um, uh, All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so everybody should be able to see the screen, just a, just a slide up there right now. Um, for questions, go ahead, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to them today. Um, during the presentation, I, I think I might end up using the whole hour. If we can, we will. Robert will be monitoring the chat. Um, if, if he has, if he's able to answer the question, then he will, otherwise, uh, he'll, just, he'll just make sure I get it, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll answer any questions we get kind of after the presentation. Um, so it, it's kind of it's kind of an ambitious webinar for the, the amount of uh, material I want to cover. I, I don't know if I'll get to everything in an hour. I, I might, I might not. Who knows? Um, but but the whole point of this this presentation, this this webinar is is obviously it's kind of the description was is you know obviously we provide an application. Um, for you, uh, so you know uh, between Darwin, Darwinet, and other things that 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 help you run your business. But we we have a lot of data behind the scenes, and we obviously use Microsoft SQL as the database, which is a fantastic database tool. With our move um, to Cohesion, which I'll talk about in a minute, you know we're uh, more heavily invested in in our Azure that that a lot of our clients will be using, and, and we've also developed it in a way that it doesn't really matter what kind of what environment you host in, whether you host on-prem yourself or you have some sort of hybrid environment or you have your own cloud or your own private cloud, these tools will work across all of these different um, kind of configurations. So I just wanted to kind of touch on each tool just, just briefly, really, and maybe give a little bit of a business use case. And, and if I can, you know, show you how to use it. And if not, just demo how it works, depending on how our time goes, um, for each of these things to kind of spark ideas of what else you can do with the system. Now, the things I'm going to be talking about, kind of going to, uh, kind of going to the next slide, uh, after this. Um, there's a whole list here. Now, it, this is really designed kind of for uh, everybody in the sense that there's some stuff on here that, that's, that's, pretty, that are, that's pretty complex. You know, it's, it's things that, that more IT oriented or data oriented people will be doing. And there's things here that are really simple for somebody that just has some business knowledge about the system, you know, should be able to use right away. And, and I've kind of designed it where we start with the simple and work to maybe more like complex, not quite that way, but, it, but, it, but you know, I want to, that's kind of the idea. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and get started talking about this. Now, the first thing on there is not really related to the webinar, but I just wanted to bring this up, the cohesion update. So for everybody that knows what cohesion is, it's the, you know, it's the new name for pay 360, the, obviously the new payroll and invoicing and, and, and frankly, the whole uh, PEO system that we've been working on. Um, we're, we're really excited with the results we've gotten this year, you know, having to make it cloud agnostic, obviously put us back a little bit, but, you know, now we, we've kind of passed that and we're seeing incredible results. Um, we had a, a build that we ran 24,000 employees through the other day and, and the build 
believe it or not, actually finished in less than a second. And I believe the whole payroll run, if I've got the numbers right, was was about 10 minutes for 24,000 employees. So we're seeing for the smaller for the smaller payroll, say under 100 employees, we've actually had problems where they're running so fast, our messaging service, which updates the dashboards of what status the payroll in, it can't it can't capture it fast enough, so it automatically comes through. It goes so fast that that the uh, the the dashboards don't update in time. So we're we're really excited about that, and um, it's our first beta is next month, and we fully expect to have this in production, you know, sometime in Q4. So, anyways, that's cohesion. You know, in a couple of weeks, we'll be running webinars, hopefully soon, on just cohesion itself. But just kind of want to give you an update on that. Okay, so the first product we'll jump into for the webinar is PopDoc, and, and it says Smartless Builder because that's kind of what PopDoc is. It's a it's a upgrade of Smartless Builder. So let me jump out of this PowerPoint. Um, so the first thing is kind of what is PopDoc? So uh, PopDoc is is actually for anybody that's used Darwin for a long time. If you know what Smartlist is, if you know what Smartlist Builder is, that's really what PopDoc is. PopDoc is the next evolution of that. And I know it's a strange name. It's it's a product E1, but that's their name. But if you really think of it as Smartlist Builder extended to the web, that's what it is. But the other part of that is it's also Smartlist Builder where it's gone and it's now um, the ability to uh, uh, talk to other products in the system. So other products can, you know, it, it's not just Dynamics GP anymore. It's tons of different products. It's It can connect to you know, CRM or Salesforce or anything else that you want it to. So think of all the smartest, the smartest builder things that you're, that you're used to using, but you can use it across products and join different data points. So I've actually signed into PopDoc right here, and this is kind of the PopDoc opening dashboard. And even from this kind of dashboard experience, you can kind of get that idea. For example, I've got a list of my CRM leads over here, and I can click that link and it would actually open up a CRM lead. I can see based upon my Darwin payroll schedule, we know any payrolls that need to come this week, upcoming employee reviews, CRM service cases that tie to, uh, to different clients, things like that. All those things are, are different data points contained in one spot. So um, basically kind of how, how this works. So the whole idea with PopDoc, and it's probably of all the tools we're talking about today, the simplest and the one that probably anybody in this, in this, on this webinar could use tomorrow. So, for example, if I go into Darwin real quick and say bring up SmartList, which everybody's kind of familiar with, you know, hopefully. You know, SmartList is just a list of objects. We give you a bunch of them, and then you can create your own with SmartList Builder. And SmartList Builder, you know, you come in and, and create your own objects. Well, the nice thing about PopDoc is you turn it on, and it says, okay, I've seen it. I can see everything that you did in SmartList and SmartList Builder. Let's just move it out to the web for you so you can use it out there. So how that works, how that kind of looks, I'm looking at PopDoc out here. Basically, the way it works is that a bunch of connectors. And connectors are just, hey, where are we looking at data? So Dynamics GP, obviously, is, is Darwin right here. So I'll talk about these others in a second. But let's just focus on, hey, people are familiar with SmartList Builder. How does this fully affect PopDoc? If I click this little icon, you know, this is my connector, kind of where it's going. And when I take a look at a list, a list is a smart list. Anything you built in smart list or smart list builder is automatically out here based on what you want it to be out here. You know, if I take a look at this list versus my smart list out here, you know, they're basically the same thing. You know, it just automatically ports all these lists out here so I can look at, look at, use it, use them. And so if I wanted to look at any of these, these lists, you know, I can actually do it out here on the web. I have got all these tabs up here, you know, say my check history smart list right here. So it's out here on the web. You know, I can see this, this information here. You know, I can do stuff by, you know, sorting by the different items there, drag and drop, you know, add columns, do all those types of things in the system. So it's got all that same type of smart list, smart list builder functionality, except it's simply exposed out onto the web in a secured area. So to kind of show you how that works, show you, show you live how to, to kind of prove it out, let's create a quick smart list builder item like you're used to doing. So I'm not gonna make this a smart list builder or a smart list demo, but I just want to start here so you show how easy it is. So let's say I bring in, you know, invoice demo, you know, so my invoices for demo. It's that a little bit. And there, right there. And then let's just go ahead and, and grab a, a table. Um, and so we'll grab, the, we'll just grab the Darwin table for invoices. 
And if you guys don't know how to find these, these tables, there's a great tool called Table Finder, which I'll show you in a second. Um, I know what table this is, so I can go ahead and look it up. Um, so find it here in the system. Uh, okay, save that table. And so now, just like we've done a million times, I've now just created, uh, oops, put it somewhere. Let's put it in a smart list builder here, okay. So once I save that, it's now, a, it's now a table, it's like a smart list item like we've created any time. But what my point of this is I wanna be able to see this out on the web. Now, just a quick note, when you're creating smart list builder items, and, and, and I bring this up because we can use this in other areas, we'll go throughout the entire demo, if you never, if you don't know where a table is, sometimes people aren't aware that there's a table finder associated with any screen you look at. So say I wanted to say, okay, I want to build something off invoices. I can bring up the invoice screen and by clicking on that table finder, it'll show me every table associated with that, with that um, thing. I can look up a specific field if I wanted to, you know, show me any field, any tables that have, you know, the, the customer number field or the grand total field and stuff like that. So I can actually easily get to these different tables. I can find the table because, you know, sometimes we don't know the SQL name of the table, you know, so basically we can come in here and find this. We'll be able to tell exactly where these tables are. It's a really good tool for, you know, when we're putting queries or anything else or all the stuff that we might be doing later. So there, there's that invoices table I just looked up. So if I need to know anything about the table, it's all right there. I can even look preview the data that's in the table. And I could have started from here and created the smart list from here if I wanted to. Kind of a side note there, but anyways, the whole point of that is I have now have that new that new that basically that new table I just built in you know that new table I just built in SmartList. Well, how do I get that to pop up? It really couldn't be easier. Once I've created a list in in um, in SmartList Builder, if I go back to that connector and I click Edit, I can come in here and go to the lists, and if I click on Add Lists, it'll actually look for any lists that I haven't automatically already brought out to, to pop up. So if we notice, there it is. There's that list I that there's that list I just created. So when I click add, it'll now come out to PopDoc at this point. So it might take a second. See, it's saying adding a list. I have my experience is it takes about 10 or 15 seconds per list. In fact, lots of times I'll just go ahead and refresh it. By the time I get back, it'll be already. So it's not adding anymore, so it's already gone. And I got tons of lists out here, so I can just kind of click on that, and there it is. There's there's that there's that list right there. So how I see that list now I can come in and say, OK, well, now I want to see that data in that list. So let's, let's just bring it out onto a tab up here. I can bring it onto my home page. If I do this, I come in and say, OK, let's, let's see if I can find it. Um, there there it is right there. And then, you know, once we select the company and I'll show you cross company stuff in a second. And now I have now my. That same list right there, just you know, it's whatever data I just chose the default data that's listed out there. And then I could create a favorite and say, okay, let's say, let's go ahead and filter this and say, and just like in smart list, you can have a bunch of different filters and there's no limit to them. So it's, it's kind of cool. You can, you can just really do stuff. Let's say customer number equals zero, zero, one. So we don't want to see one customer's invoices. And if we save that as a favorite, let's say, for a hairy side running board, HR, HSR, invoices, whatever it is. And so now I've got that as a favorite. Now, the reason I did that is we can do a lot of other stuff with this. So I've got the whole point of the uh, pop doc is okay, I've got this data, it works like SmartList Builder, that's great, it's out here. Now, now what else do I do? It? What's the difference between that and SmartList Builder? Well, A, first of all, you don't have to be signed into Darwin to see your data. And B, um, we can now expose this to anybody else. They don't even have to be users of the system. So what's really nice is basically if you ever have, as, as an example, business use, I have a one-off example. This client said, hey, I want a live look at my invoices. And I have certain fields and certain tables I want you to link. So you build it in SmartWorks Builder or, or you do it out here in PopDoc. Well, how do we get it to the client? Well, the nice thing is the, the system has these things called widgets. And we can, we can use these widgets to go ahead and actually um, create different items in the system and expose it to clients, third-party people, all those types of things. So that's done here in the developer section and, and, and really couldn't be easier. So if I wanna go ahead and create a new widget, expose that favorite I just created to a client, 
you can say, okay, HSR, invoices, very, you know, client, very side running boards, boards, you know, what type of widget is going to be. I won't go through all these. Once again, I want to spend all my time on PopDoc. We'll just say it's a list. And obviously, it's coming from Dynamics GP. And, you know, um, I believe I have it in Mac group, hopefully. And then let's find, find it down here. Uh, there it is. And then the invoices I created. And that's it. So that widget is now created. I could preview it if I wanted to. I can set a bunch of different options. Do I let, want them to let, it, let them do anything with this? I'll select all just for this purposes. But the nice thing is it has embed codes. And what all that means is, you know, if I'm putting it in an iframe in a different product, or if I just want to give them a web page, that web page is a live look at what we just looked at. So if I go ahead and create a web page there, there's the data. So I don't have to be a user of PopDoc. I don't have to be a user of Darwin. I can be anybody that, and I can tokenize this, anybody that, that I give access to, you know, they can, they can go ahead and see this. So what's powerful about that is, let's say I, uh, that customer asked me, hey, I, hey, Tom, I need that. I need that list of data. I'm using invoice as an example, but think of it, any data that you have that you want to expose to the customer that maybe we just don't natively have built into the system. So essentially it's almost like a report writer you can do one-off reports for your customers. So I'm, I'm in at the system level of my DNet. And so that customer wants that. So there's multiple places I could put it in, but I think it's kind of cool to put it in the news section where I can come in here and say, okay, you know what? A customer needs a, a live look at their data. So, you know, your invoice request you know, display from whatever today to 30. Something like that. And then we're only going to give it obviously to one client. So we'll give it to a client. And then here is your list of invoices. List of invoices. I can just copy and paste a link in, but let's make it a little nicer and use a hyperlink. Uh, there's the website address. And then we'll pop open a link in the new window, insert that, save the changes. Okay, now, so when I go and be, I'll just use the login as, but if I go be that client, so say I'm, I'm you know, this client 001, Harry Sat Running Boards, when I go in it as that, or whenever they log into the system, under their news section, they're going to have your invoice list right here, and they click on that, and there it is, there's their data. So the client now has access to this live data that they can do whatever they want with. You know, they can come in and export it to Excel if they want to. You know, it's a really fast export, too. You know, this is 1,000 records and done in a second. You know, something like that. So, and then they have the, the same abilities that you guys do basically in SmartList or SmartList Builder. They have the ability to add columns. So, if they wanted, you know, what, whatever, the, the, the created date or the credit card number or anything else, you know, I, I think I linked in the customer table in this one. But anything else that they want to bring in. They can bring in there just like just like you can with uh, with with SmartList or SmartList Builder in the system. You know, there's the, the Excel spreadsheet that I that I created. You know, and they can do things like you know sort by different columns and you know whatever they need to, need to do. You know, all that type of stuff. So it's it's a great report writing tool to solve kind of one offs for different clients. The very last thing with, I'm going to show with PopDoc is kind of more of a technical thing, but we'll use it later in, in the presentation. So I kind of wanted to show it first. Um, because we use a lot of these things later in the presentation, but basically whenever you have, um, something with pop doc, um, it's really easy to create API links for them. So an API link, you know, being a uh, ability to say, Hey, we've got this data, let's link it to a different system and, and basically make it a live link to transmit data back and forth between two systems. So before you were kind of limited to whatever is in an API library, or whatever system you're using. But the nice thing about PopDoc, if I go again into the developer section, and again, I'm not an API developer, but this couldn't be easier. So if I wanted to go ahead and, and create a, an API um, endpoint for something, I can come in here and click add endpoint, you know, whatever, client invoices or whatever I want to call it. Once again, select a connector and then come in here and say, okay, what am I going to choose from? that 
one I just created right there. I actually just use the other one. I can just say, okay, let's just do for one client if I want to. And then already the API endpoints are created. And I'll, when we get to the Power BI part, I'll actually show how to use this. But if, if anybody's familiar with APIs, you know, basically that API data is now available in all these API formats. So again, more of the technical side stuff, but it's another way to do API out of the box. That's, that's done. It took me, you know, whatever, 30 seconds to create an API for a custom list I created in the system. So, okay. So that, that was kind of the first thing. That was, that was a pop doc smart list builder. Let's move on to smartconnect.com. So um, smartconnect is obviously a tool that from E1 also that's been around for a while. It's always been an on-prem tool. So that exists there that, that's still being supported and maintained and all those things out there. Anybody who uses smartconnect, that doesn't really change. Um, but smartconnect.com is kind of their, their, their cloud-based version of that same tool. So it's, I think what's important about that is it's made it a little bit more easy to use and accessible, really, for larger customers and for smaller customers. And so lots of cool things that you can do with smartconnect.com. It really allows you to connect anything to anything in the system. So it has the same type of philosophy as PopDoc, where you have connectors to different things in the system. And I should have shown that more on PopDoc. Um, so let me jump back to PopDoc and show that for a second, and I'll, I'll kind of uh, bring that back to um, SmartConnect. So basically, out of the box, whenever you're connecting to data, you know, I just showed you GP, but all of the things I can connect to, CRM, I can connect to uh, SQL if I want to. You know, um, if I want to connect to REST services for API, Salesforce, if I need to use Salesforce, if you're using Zendesk, you know, PopDoc, I want to bring this up, also connects with what I'm about to show you, Smart Connect. So all those different things are out of the box, MailChimp, and, and whatever you happen to use, whether they're Microsoft products that, you know, we encourage you to use, or you have other third-party products that you use, this stuff's all you can connect to those things and view data, kind of a virtual integration. Smart Connect actually moves data, basically moves data from one point to the other. It's almost like an API without having to write API technology. So... Basically, same type of idea though, you create connections. You have a target and a source. And so basically, I can create a tech connection, say, what's my source from any of these things? And there's, there's a ton more that, that, that Smart Connect or E1 also supports, not even on the list. But for example, if I have you know, source data I need to get into or out of Salesforce again, you know, this is Microsoft CRM. If I need to send data to somebody at a client or gra grab data from an FTP or SFTP site, this is CRM on-prem, Microsoft SQL Service, you know, all those things. These are custom ones I created. Uh, one to the cohesion database, one to our, our, you know, the standard Darwin database. So all those things are possible. You can connect anything to anything, basically, with, with Smart Connect, as long as we can get to it. And the way, the way it works is you have a data source, that's just kind of what we did, what we have here. So we build a bunch of different data sources. And then we have integration processes. And what integration processes do, and, you know, again, kind of the idea is that you have a source and a target, you know, where's my data coming from? Where is it going to? And then obviously you can, you know, you can go back and forth if you need to. But, you know, for example, I, we are now using this for our Microsoft CRM integration, because one of the original purposes of, of uh, Smart Connect and what was built, you know, whatever, 15 years ago, was to connect. CRM with Dynamics GP. So that's a core competency of Smart Connect. Now, moving into the cloud allows a lot more customization. So we have an out of the box ability to, hey, we'll, we'll move this data over. You can change the data. It's open to you to make you basically, you can do anything you want with the data, limit, limit data that's coming over, expand data that's coming over. But an integration process, the concept is very simple. Again, I have, uh, I have a source which, and this is just a SQL query database, and it's a SQL query just looking at clients. And I'll show you what the query looks like in a second. And a target. A target is, this is Dynamics 365 CE, which is just another name for CRM online. So that's, that's CRM. And so uh, my source is, is basically the SQL database, Darwin. Target is CRM. And it's as simple as mapping. So when I look at the target integration, let's go to a page where I have a lot of data. Target integration right here. I'm basically saying, okay, you know, class equals class. You know, um, 
customer name equals customer name. So client start date equals client start date. So all these things, you're just choosing, choosing the different fields that it's mapped to. So it can take some time to actually choose these drop downs if you have a large table like a customer or employee table. That's why we have one out of the box for our CRM integration. But really, even for this, but you know, really, once you do it once, it automatically, you know, you don't have to do anything unless something changes. And then if one or two fields change, then you just choose that one or two fields and change those things. So while it can take some time, depending on how, how much data that you that you're trying to move to set up. It's a very easy way to maintain this and then you can maintain yourself. So for example, I'm gonna run this. So let's say I go ahead and this basically, this is basically taking my new clients or taking clients from Darwin and putting them in CRM itself. So I have over here in CRM, um, and we'll be doing a lot more in CRM, but let me just jump over to kind of where we are. Um, bring a view of, so this view right here is any clients that were created in CRM today. So I set it up, I set it up for that. In the system. So there's nothing here. There's no clients. There's no clients in CRM. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go ahead and run this in this, this, this actual integration. So I'll run it. And I uncheck the update existing because I actually have clients over there. But if I had the update existing checked on, it would just update the client. So you make a change in Darwin to a client, it automatically appears in CRM. So I'm going to go ahead and run this manually. Now, of course, we have process scheduling. So with process scheduling, you set it to run either every five minutes, or you can say when something changes, you get the tech triggers, when something changes, automatically run it then. So you can say run it daily, depending, you know, whatever you want it to do. But right now it's, it's running in the system and I can see it actually bringing over the clients. So it takes about three or four seconds per client to set up a new client in, in, in CRM. So we don't even have to wait for it. We'll go ahead and refresh this and we'll see them live coming in. So here are my clients from Darwin automatically synced over to CRM. And what's really cool about this is, and we'll talk more about, you know, I'm not gonna go CRM is the next topic. If I come in here and look at this, you know, all the data is here, everything's in the system. So all, all, that, all that information is right there. But because I'm also behind the scenes using a virtual integration with the system, all of these other points are here too. My check history, my payroll schedule, my invoices, all those really heavy data points I've already got, I already have, and I'll show you how this works, I already have from a virtual integration over here in Viewable. So if you think about how old CRM kind of synchronizations took, they were very long and data heavy. This is a very light way to do this, this integration. All I brought over was the clients. And I'll bring, um, you know, generally I'll bring over the employees. Those two things can not take that long. I mean, the, that integration is already done. You know, it just took a few seconds, 44 seconds for 13 clients. So that type, that type of integration, you know, is a lot less intensive on your network and a lot less taking a lot less database size and in a database. So I'll describe how that works in a second, but that's the idea of Smart Connect is you have a data source and you have um, uh, um, in the system. So let's say also, but similarly to, to kind of what we do with PopDoc, you also might have a scenario where you need to get a file of data pushed off to an FTP site at a certain time of day or any time that you want to. So that's also the ability to create these data sources in the system. And so I have a, to create a data source. The easiest ones to do are the, the, these, these uh, bulk queries. And I just really am using both PopDoc and I'm using something from, from Darwinet and mostly SQL, Microsoft SQL right here. Basically, any of these data sources that you create, and they're very easy to create, um, you can have Smart Connect read off of them. So if I was creating a new bulk query, you know, say, what's my data source? Well, I could use SQL, you know, or I could use PopDoc, whatever I want. Let's say if I was using SQL, you know, and I say, okay, I just want a list of, you know, list of clients, something like that. What's my connection? The SQL connection I have, make sure it's valid, and it's reading my database, and all it is, is a you know, simple query tool. Now, this is one of those tools that for, it can be simple and it can be complex, but it's really just knowing what table you're looking for. And that goes back to that table finder I talked about before. I needed to go back to Darwin. I could bring up the client table and say, okay, I don't know what table this is associated with a client. It's obviously a very common table that we use all the time. You know, it was the customer master table. So I'd kind of have to figure out which table I wanted to use. And it would tell me which one it is. And so I'd have all that information. And that way, when I go into 
my query builder, I say, oh, I know it's the, you know, the RM00, whatever table it is, here it is. And so creating query is as simple as that. So there it is, and here are all the fields I'm gonna use, and maybe I wanna bring this table in too. And so I can come in here and go ahead and just, maybe I'll, I need to make sure I link those tables. Pretty obvious when you're dealing with customer tables, you're just gonna link them by customer number. You know, so customer number equals customer number, and there we go. So this query could be just one table that I'm bringing over, it could be multiple tables. And then, so once I've saved that, you know, I can preview it, I can save it, do whatever I need to do. You know, that, that's now available to me as a data source for my, for Smart Connect. So simple as that, create your data sources, bring them over. Again, for the CRM integration, we kind of have those all built already. But the nice thing with using this tool for a CRM integration, you can actually go ahead and make sure that, hey, if there's other stuff that we don't have out of the box, you can create it yourself. And also it's nice too for things like data exports. So I also used, I also have something over here. I have a, I have a pop doc, uh, one that I built before, you know, it's uh, a payroll check history right here. And so maybe you have a client for whatever reason, they've said, Hey, every time, you know, I, you know, every morning or every afternoon, I just want a list of the checks and I want them in an FTP site and an Excel spreadsheet. So I can go ahead and do something with them. So just like I did with, with the SQL, I just connected it to uh, a list. All that is, that's a smart list. So I connected it to a smart list in PopDoc. So I can take, kind of take a look at what it looks like. So there it is, it's just a bunch of checks that, from a PopDoc smart list. And so I created an integration process that exports that data to an FTP site on demand. So I can either run it, or again, I can do a schedule. I'll show you the schedule in a second. But say I want to go ahead and send this off to the client. Again, to run that integration, and I'm just manually doing it. Again, the schedule takes care of this. But I can run that integration. It's taking, okay, it's sending them any checks that were created today. There were three checks that were created today. So if I go in, and I'll go over to my, uh, my FTP tool here. There it is. So that, that file was already sent off to a client on an FTP site, wherever they... You know, wherever they look at their data. So there it is. You know, I just created this at 2.32 p.m. Eastern and, you know, whatever data they wanted in their, in their Excel spreadsheet. Again, it's anything that you created out of Smartless Builder, you know, whether it's 50 fields or four fields, there it is. So it actually just took that data from, from HopDoc and sent it off to them. It basically sends a real file off anybody. So any third parties, you know, third party vendor, a client, whoever needs data from any source that you have, you can use a combination of either PopDoc, Smart Connect, or both to go ahead and send that off to the system. So you can send them off to anybody that needs that, that information. And, and, and I'll, I'll show you how that integration kind of looks. So it's really simple to do. So the nice thing is when it's reading from, um, reading from PopDoc just brings in those, those PopDoc fields. And again, smart, think of SmartList Builder or SmartList. Hey, I've got a bunch of fields in SmartList or SmartList Builder. I want to send them off to a client nightly in a file. So when I look at the target, basically I say, okay, uh, what fields do I want to send off? I just chose the first five fields in the system. So if I want to go ahead and, and you know add more fields, I can or do whatever I need to do. So, so I can add a column and say, okay, well, you know what else I need? I need to know. You know, the, the I, didn't, I already had the check date and check number on there, maybe something like the department on there. So I wanted to put the department on that field. I can add, you know, just any columns that I want. Any columns that I choose here will be added to that, that spreadsheet. So next time I run it, it's going to have now whatever eight or nine columns that, that are associated with it. So it's really just simple. Hey, choose your column, save it, and then... Whenever the next time it runs, it'll use that. Or if I run it now, it'll it'll just have now have those extra columns added to it. So it's really easy to maintain these things. And you have options with like I'm doing a file stuff. I can go ahead and overwrite that file. I can append to that file. I could actually have a separate tab for each client or each employee if I wanted to. But so when I rerun this, when I rerun this process, um, and, and go ahead go ahead and create that file again with those three checks. I'm going to create a new file in my, as soon as it gets done, got to save it and then run it. Start the process. And again, 
hopefully you're using the, the scheduler so you don't have to do that. So, you know, it took whatever one second to finish only three, three, um, three files. So that's, that's pretty typical. There it is. So there's my new file. So whatever FTP site it was sent to, now I have, there's an apartment and I added federal taxes. So it's, it's really simple to maintain these things. The client comes back and says, I need a new field in it. No problem, it takes you two seconds. You don't have to come to us to do those things. It's really kind of an end user type experience in the system. And so again, hopefully you're using the schedule. So if that client said, hey, I needed, I needed that, sent to me at every, you know, a certain time, you know, I could come in here and say, go ahead and run this, you know, every day at um, 8.30 a.m. So they'll get it every morning. Now, if the checks run today, you probably want to do it at the end of the day, you know, for whatever it is. But so once you save this, the system's just going to run that integration automatically. You don't have to think about it. It's going to send the data to your customer or, or vendor, whoever needs to see that those data points once a day at 5 p.m. or whatever it might be. Okay, so obviously tons more Smart Connect can do, but you just kind of want to move off of that. So that's a little preview of that. Um, next thing is, is talking again about going back to kind of CRM. So I, I kind of pre previewed that, but the, the new version kind of our, our CRM integration has a lot of advantages over the old version. First of all, that's kind of what I want to talk about PopDoc and Smart Connect first is um, PopDoc gives you a lot of flexibility for virtual integration. I'll talk about that in a second. And Smart Connect, says is is a is a much more stable tool because it's been designed always for for CRM integrations and it gives the flexibility it's not a, a tightly controlled uh, programmer based black box it's open to you you can do whatever you want with it you know the stuff that kind of gave you out of the box you can make adjustments to decide what data is integrated into CRM based upon your needs um, so going back to CRM itself so I'm going to go back to that list and I'm actually going to go ahead and delete out these clients created today. I don't want because they're really repeats of clients I have in there. Um, so get rid of those those clients in the system. But you notice that when I when I brought over these clients, I only brought over the client information, basically the client maintenance screen. However, we were able to see all of the other, other data right away. We were able to see you know um, the invoices, the the checks, and all those types of things. So that's done by what's called a virtual integration. So real integration versus virtual, I don't know if real is the right term, but real integration means I'm actually taking a copy of the data from Darwin, essentially in this scenario, and moving it a copy of it over to CRM. Anytime something changes in Darwin, SmartCat picks it up and changes it in CRM. And that's a great way to do it. And it, it's you know something like clients and employees, maybe you want that real data over there for various reasons. Um, but if you're getting down into stuff that's very database heavy, that could be a burden on networks, resources, things like that. And that's why we use things like virtual integrations for all this other stuff. Essentially, this is a pop doc view. So this is smartless builder, pop doc, whatever you want to call it, built right into the system itself. So this virtual view of all this data, it's it's real time live. Something changes in Darwin, it's viewable out here in the system. So all this, this heavy, heavy data. I mean, I've got, you know over 15 years of data for this client, probably from our, our demonstration database, it's all out here without running any synchronizations. So in that, whatever, it was what, 44 seconds to run that client, not only was the client information, in those 44 seconds, I had the entire history of this client out in CRM. So your customer service people, your sales people, whoever needs to see this, can see this data live in the system, all these different things here. And it's pretty cool because even in this scenario where I'm looking at it, we're looking at it in here, it works like kind of like Smartless Builder does. Again, I can come in and add and remove columns in the system, just like you're used to um, there. So if I, I just added whatever that column was to the end, it's at the end of the system. And it's nice, I can drill down. So if I come in here and say, okay, you know what, I need to see you know, other data in the system, I have the ability to do that. So let's say I want to you know, put in uh, social security number, depending upon if I'm bringing that over, or I'm masking that or whatever. I can come in here and, and actually don't even need to do that. I can come in here and just do this and say, I wanna see the transactions associated with a specific check. So if I choose a check right here, there are the transactions associated with it. So think of the probably you know, millions of transactions that you have in the database. I can do all those in CRM now without any data moving. 
So it's it's all viewable. That's what the, the beauty of the, the virtual integration is. So, and, and it's the same thing with, you know, the employee information's here. So if I opened up an, an employee, I could see their same information drilled down, just like we with a client come here and say, look, okay, here's their employee information, you know, um, you know, check history and all those types of things. Now, to just kind of show you kind of how it works is, you know, one thing I'm doing virtually here also is the notes associated with this. So here's my, yeah, this is just the, the notes that you might be taking in Darwin. So I got a note here associated with Harry's side running boards. I'm displaying it in CRM. You know, people might be, you know, throwing notes in the, on the client screen in Darwin. So you might be, you want people to be able to read them in other places. So if I come in here and say, okay, showing you know, webinar. And I attach that note in Darwin, that's immediately available in CRM. So if I just refresh the screen, there it is. So that note is right there. So the virtual integration is, is real time. You know, something happens to Darwin, it's real time viewable out here in CRM or anywhere else that you might have the data. Obviously, I'm, I'm using CRM as an example because that's who we are. We're Microsoft. We, we support CRM. We know CRM. But as you probably saw from these connectors, it's the same concept that if you happen to be a Salesforce shop, you know, it works with Salesforce, those things. It can work with all of the, you know, a bunch of the other CRM products that are out there, too. So it's not just limited to the Microsoft world. We, we love the Microsoft world. We support the Microsoft world, so we prefer to use that stuff. But, you know, that's, that it supports those other areas, too. And in fact, you know, if you say you did want to do an integration with your Salesforce, you know, we, we obviously can help you get data out, but E1 can help you with that type of the integration too. So there's resources between between um, us and E1 that can help you with any of those types of integrations that you want to do. And then one last thing I wanted to show you about kind of CRM and, and some integrations, and then, then I'll tie that over to Teams, is it also, they've also really expanded how their Outlook integration is working. So tracking emails and things like that. You might have noticed over here, you know, in, in, on this front screen of Harry's side running boards, it's tracking all the different kind of emails associated with this. So, you know, it's got a tracking tool over here. So anytime there's a, there's a tracking information, stuff like that, it's, you know, I can, I can set those regarding stuff like that. But let's just, let's just do a quick example. Let's say I'm going to just send this to myself, this dummy account I use, you know. Uh, maybe you have, you know, you have probably have a, something on your website where a, a customer comes on and says, I'm interested in your services, and it goes to a specific email. So let's pretend that's happening here, you know, interested in payroll services or something like that. You know, you know, I, you know, need payroll for Jim's body shop, like that. You know, Jim Smith, and then puts in his phone number and then you know, we'll get his email, whatever it is. So anyways, that email comes in. So I just sent it to myself. So it should be here in just a second. Well, the nice thing is if I get that email in my system and this works with both Outlook 365 web and also on-prem Outlook right here that I'm using here. Well, let's say, okay, well, that's not being tracked against anything. So that email came in. If this was already being tracked against something, it was a conversation to be tracked automatically in, in CRM. So it's that same tracking capability that it's always had. It works a little bit nicer and smoother. You can see it right here on the right-hand side already. I can actually go ahead and manually track it against a record if I wanted to. You know, or I could come in and say, um, I can actually add a new record. So if this was, oh, I've got a new lead here. I can come in here right from there and say, okay, I've got a new lead. You know, let's just say. Jim's auto body. And then you choose which fields that you are going to require or that you even want to have out here in this create and this, this quick create. You know, come in here. Um, body's name of the company, you know, you know, his email, his phone, you know, just copy and paste his phone in here. You know, all those types of things. Anything that you want to put in here, you can. And so right from that email, I just went ahead and created a new lead in the system. So that lead is now, now exists out in CRM so quickly and easily. And there's even a plugin on your phone if you're using, you know, uh, using the Outlook out on your phone, the same plugin exists in your phone so you can create those different types of things in the system. And again, it's not just limited to um, uh, 
uh, on-prem Outlook, it works very similarly for web-based Outlook. So here's web-based Outlook, you know, this notification about Power BI report, you know, it's being tracked in the system. So all these things are here. So here's, you know, here's a, here's an old lead, George Smith's auto car. And so I can bring those things in. I can, I can look at the lead, open it up, all those stuff, some things there too. So it has, CRM is very nice, clean integration with Office 365 and on-prem Outlook to make sure we're tracking all those different emails in the system itself. Um, okay, now kind of continue this idea of the whole integration. So, you know, that was CRM, but using CRM to lead into the kind of the next thing, Microsoft Teams. Now, some people on the call are probably using Teams, some people maybe never use Teams. So this might or might not be relevant to you, but if you're planning on using Teams in the future, it's, you know, it's got some very nice features. So first thing is right here within CRM, if I'm looking at this, this client and I have an issue with it, I'm not even in Teams right now. Well, the nice thing is I can come in here and click on this icon and I'm gonna see able to see, okay, well, it's gonna look at the data and show me any, any chats that are linked to this client and I can look at other chats too. But these are the five chats I have going on with this client. So maybe different teams that I'm, I'm able to see, I can go in and see the history of any chats and what's been talked about about these different clients in the system. So it actually not only tracks emails, it'll track your customer service chats about this particular client. So if I wanted to start a new chat, and you know, let's bring in a couple people. So you know, my fake user and you know, we'll, we'll bug Kevin and see what's going on with him and say, okay, you know, uh, and then the chat name is about Harry's set of running boards and you know, anything else I might need to do, I can start, I can start the chat with this, say, okay, we start a chat. And, you know, this client has an issue. Send that chat out to people. And so I can just chat with people or I can even include a copy of the record here where they can actually open it in Dynamics 365. And in fact, if I say, okay, well, you know, that's kind of nice, but let's go ahead and say, let's go ahead and look at this in Teams. I can actually jump directly over to Microsoft Teams. I can see this again, either in the application or the web version, and it'll open up my Teams right here and I'll see my chat conversations, you know, right here. So there's that, that, that chat I just started and I can respond to it. Chat, go back and forth about it, whatever it needs to do. Or if I'm actually sent over a copy of the record, you know, hey, this client needs help, here it is. You know, I'll help. I can pop it open in Dynamics 365. Um, and then it works the same way with your, you know, if you use the application version versus the web version, it's all synchronized. Doesn't matter which version you like to use. But the nice thing about this too is, again, I could have just jumped in when I get this and they pop up that open, it'll open up the record in 365. So if I get it in Teams, it comes back over to CRM. So it all integrates together. And in fact, the nice thing about this is Teams also has apps for this. So if I'm in Teams, I don't need to go over to, to CRM and sign into that. It's all right here too. You know, here's the same list of accounts that we talked about before. You know, there's Harry side running boards. You know, I'm looking at it right within my Teams framework. You know, I can come in here and again, I can see a check history list right here. So all that same information, wherever you are, you have access to it because it's all integrated together in the system. And the Teams app even has links to kind of the last two things we'll talk about, which I'll do quickly. But, you know, if I, I have a Power BI app here, you know, I have, you know, when we go to Microsoft Flow next, I have my Power Automate app here, which will show any flows that are that I currently have, Microsoft Flows that I currently have, and whether they're on or off. So right now it's only showing one because it's just showing me anything related to Microsoft Teams. Basically, I have a Microsoft Flow that says, whenever in a new message in Team, send me an email. So I can see all my flows, and I can turn them on and off from here, too. So a little bit of, it kind of integrates everything in one spot. Um, okay, so it's kind of the integration of Microsoft Teams. I'm running short on time, so I want to get at least to the next topic, and then uh, uh, that might that might be it. We might not get to Power BI today, but the next thing is um, Microsoft in their kind of Power platform has uh, um, Power Automate. And, and so what Power Automate is, is basically, it's, 
it's um, it's it does a lot of different things. But the thing that I think that's that's pretty nice about it is it lets you create workflows across multiple applications, notifications, creating records, getting approval processes. So anybody that's familiar with CRM has ever used CRM in the past, probably remember they had a workflow module. They have a workflow module still exists. It's pretty nice. It does different things in the system. But essentially what Microsoft has done is they've taken that concept and made it kind of standalone that can talk to any data point. So once again, I can use Darwin data to create workflows when something happens in the system. So there's lots of things that you can do. And you know, here's a list of here's a list of say my Microsoft flows that I have in a system. And again, it's all based upon connectors, it's just like connecting your data. And obviously SQL is probably the, the biggest one that we would use, but it, you know, Microsoft has a library of hundreds of them. So all of these things are things I can connect data to and from. So I can move data, I can create notifications, alerts, different types of things built into the system. So a couple quick ones. So my flow is right here. So let, let's look at one I built. I won't rebuild this now because I'm not gonna have time, but I, I think you'll get the idea. So what I did with this workflow, it's really simple. So Microsoft Flow, four steps. Basically it's saying, hey, when an item is created, and basically what it's saying, it's using, once again, a link to my database. You'll notice, it, you know, and it, again, you can use a table finder. That's the check history table in Darwin. So it's saying, when there's a new check, what are we gonna do? Well, it gets that table, it gets the rows so we have the data, Basically what it does is it uses my Twilio account to send this text. So it's in this, this flow, once I figured out how to use flows, it takes about five minutes to set up. So it's gonna send out a text to the different employees um, based upon you know, whenever there's a new check in the system. And this is what it's gonna say. It's gonna say, you have a new paycheck, it's grabbing the employee ID, there's the check date, the gross wages and the net wages. And if I wanted to, I could bring in any other field from that check history table and put it in that text. And I can grab other tables and stuff like that. So, and I, I kind of, to make it simple and easy, what I did is I went into uh, the employee screens and I put in, I mean, it's just using, a, uh, I mean, I could use their regular phone number field, but just easier to kind of see here. I grabbed the user to find field and I put in a phone number there that will send the text out. So it's actually looking at the phone number of that employee and sending them a text if we get a new, if we get a new paycheck. So here, I'll, I'll just go ahead and run a really quick auto payroll. So we'll create some new, new, uh, um, new checks and I'm gonna make a check date today. And we'll go ahead and, and just do a auto payroll, create, a, like, it'll create three or four checks real quick. And we'll see that and I'm sending the texts to myself. So I'll screenshot and send the text as soon as they come in. We'll just take a second to get through this payroll. So it's kind of cool because then you can actually watch, you can actually see the, the workflows, the running and the results of the workflows too as they run. So they finalize this payroll. Take a second here. All right, so that's done. So basically what we did is we just created a, uh, created several new checks. So what's happening in the Power Automate side, I go to my flows and let's go back to that one and then just look at the, uh, run history of that flow. It hasn't run yet. And of course, a watch pot never boils, let's see. Make sure I've turned that on. I'm not sure why I didn't run here. Of course, I just ran it a few hours ago and it worked fine.
Well, I might have turned it off or whatever, but this is, <laughs> I ran it a little while ago and this is what it looks like. Basically, it, it runs, okay, actually it, it ran. I've got it right here. So just came in, I just was too impatient and I'll go ahead and send the screenshot here, 2.55 PM. And I, I sent all those checks to my phone. So it's just coming into my phone itself. Checks. Let's see if we see another run history. Let's wait for that email to come in. Okay, there it is. So 48 seconds ago, it ran. And so basically what it did was it grabbed, you know, a new, a new check came in. Here's the, kind of the technical details. And then what it did was it sent these, these texts out send a text out to use my Twilio account to a phone number and here's the actual verbiage of the text there and to actually see it. And here's the screenshot I just took from my phone. And so again, I sent all three to me. So like you saw, like you saw, you can put any data you want, but basically I've just sent a text notification. So I use paid checks as an example, but think about it. You can do it for anything that you want. Say you put a client on hold and you want to make sure a salesperson knows about it, you know, or a CEO, something like that. You have a new employee in the system and you want to send a text confirmation back to, to a client. So you're not limited to the notification stuff that, you know, we're enhancing notifications, you're adding more stuff. But basically anything across, you know, I use again Darwin here as an example, across anything, you can you can actually send these types of notifications, emails, texts, whatever you want. It's all based upon Microsoft Flow. Um, tons of Microsoft Flows that I wanted to show you, but let me just show you one last one and that'll kind of be the last thing I'm going to do today. But um, you know, I, I promised a little bit of touch on social media too. Uh, so what we also, you know, one of the connectors is in this case, Twitter. So the nice thing is the system, the Microsoft Flow can basically monitor social media for you and alert you about things. So basically what I've said is, hey, I used an existing connector. I just grabbed a template and said, okay, let's see what Twitter's got out there. So when a new tweet is posted, search text, search for Thinkware, and then it sends me an email. It says whenever something mentions on, is mentioned on Twitter about Thinkware, it's going to send me an email about it. So that's been, you know, I've turned that on and that's been happening. There actually happens to be uh, another company out there called Thinkware that does dash cams. So it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm getting notifications about them, but you'll notice uh, this was a Japanese one, but their dash cam, there's Thinkware, you know, I'm not sure I've translated to English. So I'm not sure what they are, but you know, they happen to be, a, you know, I've, I've had somebody tweeted about them. Basically what happens is, so you can put in, certain search terms, or you can put in your PEO name or whatever you want. Microsoft Flow can send, again, I used email in this case, could send you a text, whatever makes sense to you. Hey, somebody mentioned you on Twitter, just so you know about it, to react about to thank them or to, to, to you know, if there's any concerns or something like that. So beyond the typical Twitter functionality, obviously you can see your ads and mentions and stuff like that. You can get push alerts based upon, you know, things that are going on with, uh, with Twitter. So, um, okay, well, that's that's really the, the hour, the time I had today. So, you know, we got through almost everything. I couldn't get to Power BI today, so we'll save that for another webinar. Um, again, if you've asked questions, I have not been I've not been monitoring the questions, so I'll look at them afterwards um, and I'll, I'll try to get any answers to you. But again, my my email is just tom at thinkrank.com or you can email sales at thinkrank.com. So if you have questions, um, comments, anything, just just reach out. Uh, reach out to us. We'll be doing plenty more webinars, um, probably break down each of these different areas, kind of in a more deeper dive. But the whole idea today was to show you that, you know, the, that there are other tools out there besides just um, the applications we give you that you can do for different data things. So again, send any questions and things like that, either through the chat or through email. But uh, thanks again for attending today's webinar. There will be a recording of this. We'll have it in the client area. So we'll send everybody I think I think the, the the system automatically sends you a link for the recording too. So hopefully you'll get that. If not, we'll have a recording out on the, the client area of the website probably later this week. Um, okay, guys. Again, thank you for your time. Appreciate it.